Hey everybody, how's it going today? So we have a pretty interesting topic that we're going to be taking a look at. Um, we're actually going to be comparing a few different AIs and we're going to be taking a look at their ability to output lecture material. So we're going to be taking a look at how each of them varies in use as well as the actual content that is output by them. This should be pretty short and to the point. We're not going to go too deep into anything, but hopefully it's a good experience and you can learn something along the way. So real quick, let me go ahead and introduce the AIs that we'll actually be using in this video. So the first one is going to be eduade.ai and eduade is really more designed specifically for instructional design. So it's there to help you create content for your courses and not really much of anything else. It does have a chatbot component, much like ChatGPT. However, the AI in this chatbot is, again, designed for instructional design purposes. So really, it's looking at it from the perspective of, oh, how can I take this material and turn it into learning content? Another AI that is very much like eduade.ai is Magic School. Magic School is again designed specifically for creating learning material. And so it's pretty similar to eduade.ai, but at the same time, it is different. Um, and specifically that comes from both the out content that is output by either of the two AIs, as well as the interface, so how you interact with it. And then the last AI that we're going to be taking a look at is going to be ChatGPT. And so by this point, I'm sure you've probably heard of ChatGPT, if not already used it. And it's really kind of the industry standard if there is such a thing for artificial intelligence. But either way, that's going to be kind of our control group, I guess I would say. And so for this example, we're going to be using ChatGPT 3.5 as opposed to GPT-4, which is only available in their paid subscription model. With that in mind, let's go ahead and actually take a look at some of these user interfaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to eduade.ai where I'm already signed in. Uh, I just use my Google account to sign in in this case, but here we are on the AI content generator page. And so this is where the magic happens. Over here on the left, we have a few different options for the type of AI we would like to use. And you do get access to some of this stuff in the free tier. However, the majority of what you're actually going to be able to use is going to be found here in the content generator section. So if you do plan on trying to use the feedback bot or the chat bot, then you should possibly consider paying for eduade.ai. But that being said, whenever we are ready to generate some content, we're going to head over here to this middle area. And from here, we can choose our subject. Um, we are kind of limited on the amount of subjects that we can choose from. However, I've found that with the inclusion of enrichment and career and technical training, that I can really kind of cover any kind of topic that I would like to teach. But again, that's just my experience. So. Keep that in mind when you're using it, your mileage may vary. Along with that, we can also choose the grade. By default, upper class is going to be selected. However, you can just click this drop down and change it over to post-secondary so that we can get to the college level. And then from there, we just have to choose which kind of content we would like to generate. And we won't do the content generation right now. I'll go ahead and save that for after we finish comparing the different user interfaces but there are some options that you can choose from when deciding what kind of content you would like to generate. In my experience with eduade.ai, I found that for creating lecture content, the best option is to choose this information objects tab, and then over here, go ahead and click informative text plus questions. And again, we'll go ahead and cover the content generation here in a little bit. However, I want to go ahead and jump over to Magic School and take a look at how the user interface compares. So again, Magic School is pretty easy to log into. I'll just click the login button and it'll automatically sign me in with my Gmail account. That being said, you can use whichever email you'd like, but keep in mind that if you are using your Butler email address, 
since this is coming from an outside source, you may have to check your quarantine for a verification email with both Eduade or Magic School. But that being said, once we get into the Magic School, we'll go ahead and take a look at it here. So it can kind of be a little bit daunting because there are so many things to choose from. Um, for instance, you might be asking yourself, oh, geez, what can I use to actually make lecture content? And so for the purpose of this video, I've actually identified a couple tools that seem to work best for this purpose. However, you are more than welcome to go in here and play around and try some of the different tools on your own. With that being said, we'll take a look up here at the top and we'll notice that we can actually organize the tools a little bit so that we can kind of navigate through them easier. And so we're going to go ahead and click the content button at the top. And from here, we can kind of see the two tools that I've really identified as being viable for lecture creation. Uh, the first is going to be informative text, and then the second one is going to be the academic content generator. And while both of these tools are comparable, I found that the academic content generator is just a little more free with the setup and the options and parameters that you can configure. So now we're going to go ahead and jump over to our last tool, which is going to be ChatGPT. And again, you've probably used this, or at the very least, you've probably heard of this. Um, ChatGPT kind of made waves back in November of 2022, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, I guess. Um, but back then, that's when it opened up for beta access to the public. And it was really the first kind of profound large language model to hit the market and be publicly available. And so that was actually ChatGPT3. Um, since then, we've seen the upgrade to ChatGPT 3.5 and, of course, ChatGPT 4. But that being said, ChatGPT is actually really simple and easy to use. You kind of just have a dialog box that you type your message in, and then you have some suggestions here to kind of get you started, but not a whole lot to mess around with. More or less, you just kind of type your message and hit the send button, and it'll return the results. That being said, one thing to consider is that when you're choosing between ChatGPT, Magic School, and Eduade.ai, both Magic School and Eduade.ai are set up to actually help develop learning materials specifically. They were programmed in that way. And ChatGPT is more or less just a general chatbot, but it actually can be told, or I guess I should say maybe influenced to take on a certain persona that you define, if that makes sense, I guess. <laughs> um, so if I want ChatGPT to be an instructional designer, I can actually give it the instructions to do that, and in turn, it will yield me really similar results to both Magic School or Eduade.ai. And so we can kind of develop this persona on our own if we would like to. However, OpenAI, the developers of ChatGPT, have actually released a teaching with AI guide where they talk about how you can use AI in the classroom. And they actually give you a few different prompts that you can give to ChatGPT, if you would like to, of course, that will actually go ahead and give it this instructional designer persona. So we're actually going to go ahead and use this create effective explanations, examples, and analogies prompt, and this is going to help us write our lecture content. So all we have to do is go ahead and copy it and head back over to ChatGPT. And from here, we can just go ahead and paste it into the dialog box. And, you know, that will work. However, we can do one better than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on my name. And then I'm going to click custom instructions. And so when I go to enter custom instructions, basically this is where it allows me to kind of tell ChatGPT how to respond. And so I can tell it things that will help it to better understand my purpose for using ChatGPT. So for instance, if you want to say, oh, I'm a teacher, I work at Butler Community College, blah, 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 whatever you want to tell it. Just make sure you're not giving it any personal or sensitive data because you don't really want to give that to anyone, let alone some, you know, random robot on the internet. 
But what we're actually going to do is go down here to the box that says, how would you like ChatGPT to respond? And so once you're in here, you can actually go ahead and paste it and then click the save button. And of course I can't click it because I've already entered these instructions. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the enable for new chats option is turned on. And then whenever I send a message, something simple, just like, hi, ChatGPT, of course, will respond with, hello there, I'm your friendly instructional designer and I'm here to help you create effective explanations, so on and so forth. And it'll ask me questions about my students, like what grade are they in? And, you know, a bunch of other stuff. But what I've done here is I've effectively turned ChatGPT into an instructional design tool, much like Magic School or EduAid. And you know, you can also use this same prompt and receive similar results if you're doing it with Google's Bard or Microsoft Copilot, which is more or less just ChatGPT with a reskin. And I will say, if you're trying to decide which AI you should use for this, something to consider is that both Bard and Copilot can do image generation, and Copilot actually gives you access to ChatGPT4, the most advanced model available, and it does that for free. You just have to sign in with your Butler credentials. So now we're actually going to jump back to EduAid and we're going to begin taking a look at the content that's actually generated by these AI models. Um, I mentioned this before, but we'll have to make sure that we select our subject in EduAid. So in this case, we'll just go ahead and leave it set to science and then we have to choose our grade. So we'll make sure post-secondary is selected. And then from there, we'll just go down and make sure that we have information objects selected and then informative text plus questions. And now we can just give it exactly what we'd like to create a lesson on. So if you have a lesson plan, you can kind of use that to tell the AI what you would like to develop a lesson on. But if you don't have a lesson plan, maybe you have a book that you're gonna be teaching from during this course or something along those lines, or if you have a chapter, you can kind of just give it a synopsis of what the chapter is about and punch it in here. So for instance, if we're doing something on microbiomes, we'll just say, uh, we can say something like microbiome, health, and the human body. Yeah, something like that, right? Something simple. And one great feature that I found with EduAid is the ability to enhance your prompts or topic keywords. Um, so all I'm going to do is enter this really what is a somewhat basic prompt. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click the enhance button. And what it's going to do, it's going to take that and kind of turn it into something that is going to help the AI generate content that is higher quality. So you can kind of look through this and make sure that it's, you know, up to your standards um, or really just kind of covering whatever you, it is that you want to cover but it's really a great feature and it makes it a lot easier to use and to develop you know high quality top-notch content then from there we're just gonna click add to workspace and that's going to go ahead and pop it over into this area we can see on the right hand side and we'll just give it a second to you know finish up and so there we have it, a page of lecture notes. And I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about microbiomes, so I'm not really the best person to tell you about the accuracy of this content, but it certainly seems convincing. And so you can feel free to press pause and take some time to read through this if you feel so inclined. But in the meantime, we'll go ahead and jump over to Magic School and take a look at how we create content in that. So I mentioned that we can choose between informational text and academic content when we're trying to create lecture content. I'll just go ahead and open up both really quickly so you can have a look. So here we have the informational text menu, pretty straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and pop back over to the academic content menu now, which again is pretty standard. The biggest change that I've noticed at least is most of this stuff that's in academic content 
also appears in informational text. It's just that in the academic content tool, it's user defined. When in the informational text tool, it was all predefined. So you had a selection that you could choose from and that was really it. In my opinion, I would say to stick with the academic content generator just because it tends to be a little bit easier to really customize your content. So from there, we'll actually just go ahead and fill this out really quickly. So text length, we want to see about a page. And what kind of content do we want to see? This is the one thing I really love about Magic School is the ability to choose the kind of content. So in this case, we're really just going to do a textbook page, but notice some of the ideas that it gives you. And you know, you can really take whatever you want and run with it here in the academic content generator tool. But like I said, we'll just stick to textbook page for now. So again, if we have a lesson plan, we may already have some objectives. Um, and we probably know what we want to talk about. But if you don't, that's okay. Like I said, you can take a summary of what the chapter is about, or you can just make something up yourself to input here. Whatever, it's really up to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and, in this case, go back to Eduade, and I'm going to take this prompt here, since we already have it, and I'm going to paste it in our academic content generator. So then we'll go ahead and click generate and give it a couple of seconds before we see the response. All right, and again, feel free to pause and take a look at this if you would like. And in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and jump back over to ChatGPT. So with ChatGPT, I already said hi, and it responded and told me, hey, I'm an instructional designer, how can I help you? So we're gonna go ahead and answer the questions that it asked, like what grade level our students are, and so in this case, we're gonna say college level. All right. So now it's going to ask us what is the topic or concept we would like to explain and how is it going to fit into our curriculum. And it's also going to ask if the students know anything about this already or if it's a totally new topic to them. And what ChatGPT is going to do is it's going to use this information to create the best possible response. So again, we're just going to copy and paste the same response from Eduade and we're going to go ahead and define this a little bit more and answer some of the questions that it's asking us so we can let it know that this is the first time our students are seeing this material and we'll see how it adjusts accordingly so we've gone ahead and given it the information and let's just go ahead and see what kind of response it creates so there we have our response and the response that chat gpt gave us was maybe decent but it was also a little bit short so maybe we want to make a make it a little bit more comparable to something like magic school and the great thing about chat gpt is we can just go back and we can tell it you know hey that was great but i'd like to see a little longer a little bit more detailed response so i've already got that typed up and i'm just going to go ahead and enter that and see how it responds so again, now we have a similar response. It's just a little more lengthy this time and a little bit more detailed. And again, we can ask it to refine this a little bit more, but we'll just go ahead and call it good for now. I'll give you a second to pause this and read through it if you would like to. And now that you've got a chance to read through that, if you chose to, of course, I've mentioned a little bit about how we can refine the text with ChatGPT and you know it was super easy and super intuitive we just you know tell it exactly what we want to see and it'll kind of tailor it to that given that we set up this sort of persona it will be a little more limited in the responses and how it can adapt the material that you're telling it to adapt but overall it's pretty good and it's pretty easy to use so let's jump back to Magic School and Eduade and take a look at those because really there's not a lot that we can actually do to refine this without generating new content. And this is going to be the case with both Eduade and Magic School. We see here we have the option to edit the prompt, which if we click that, you know, it'll give us this menu again and we can redefine what the topic or the standards and objectives are. 
and we can redefine what we want it to actually look like, um, but we're really just kind of doing it all over again rather than fine tuning the original response. So let's go ahead and jump back to Eduaid and we'll kind of see it's the same situation. We do have some tools here. Um, we have a transform tool, we have an edit tool, but we really don't have the option to refine the output from the AI. So if we want to go back through and we wanted to make something more clear or focus on something a little bit deeper, we would actually have to go back and redefine that in the topic area. That being said, we do have some kind of handy tools here. We can extract keywords, generate headings, uh, increase or decrease the lexile. So those are pretty handy. Um, we can even translate it, but they don't go too crazy with the fine tuning tools. But with that, we'll go ahead and draw to a close, I think. So I'll go ahead and pop back through so you can see the original responses that each AI gave us. So first we have Eduaid. And then second we have Magic School. And finally, ChatGPT, and here's the original response, and then here's the refined response, after asking to make it longer and more detailed, of course. And you can feel free to pause at any point to compare the quality of the responses or anything like that. But for now, I really appreciate you all watching, and hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions or anything of that nature, please feel free to reach out to me. But aside from that, thank you, and have a great day.